The Gospel from John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to him, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you, you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The gospel of our Lord. Indeed, the disciples believed in him. But I think his mama was a little bit upset, because even though uh, Jesus had learned a lot in his years of preparing to be the Son of God at his father's knee and And certainly at his mother's table, he'd forgotten some basic tenets of wisdom and some manners. First of all, I don't know how he missed it, but we all know that when mama's happy, everybody's happy. And when mama's not happy, nobody's happy. Clearly, in this case, mama was not happy. Why was she not happy? Because she she noticed people's needs were not being met. She noticed that, that the party was not going to continue. She had this heart of hospitality and this innate, this innate sense to know what people needed. So she turns to her son, and she knows. She's mom. She knows who her son is. And she has, says they have no wine. They've run out of wine. And Jesus, the only son of God who I, who I will submit never sinned, did, I think, sass back. <laughs> woman. Who calls their mother woman? Mom. <laughs> Why couldn't he have said that? Mom, uh, what can we do about that? No, he says, woman. What concern is that to you and to me? Well, of course, he, he goes on to say, my hour has not yet come, and that is rather cryptic. But the first thing he forgot at that point is all of us, whether we're the son of God or whether we're the CEO or whether we're the poorest peasant in the world, our mama asks us something, and we we do it. You remember what it was like. Your mama asked you to sweep the floor. You swept the floor. Wash the dishes. You wash the dishes. Get out of my dirt. Those of you who remember brooms and dustpans, you, you got out of, out of her dirt. And uh, Jesus sort of missed that. Now I know there's all kinds of bigger things going on here, but there's a lesson for us in this gospel. A lesson I learned when I came to this synod, and one of the associates to the bishop gave us kind of our first training, and uh, he said, the first thing you do as pastors is you pay the rent. What does that mean? You pay the rent. You pay attention to your people. And then he winked at us and he said, and you pay particular attention to the women in your congregation. Why is that? Some young whippersnapper pastor asked. Not me at that point. (laughs) Because they're the ones that care. They're the ones who make sure that the needs of the congregation are met in myriad, myriad ways. I learned it early on from my father. Now, there's only one area where I probably claim to have just uh, one step on Jesus. 
and this is the area. Had I have had a response like that to my mama in the presence of my father at any age, I would have been taken out to the woodshed or at the very least spoken to very directly. You do not talk to your mother like that. When Matthias was a little boy, he did the very same thing. One of the very few times I'd raised my voice to that very mild-mannered child. Kathy had asked something like this, and basically Matthias said, that's not my job. <laughs> uh, boy, he heard from his papa. And I'm proud to say that through all these years, Matthias has really been a respectable boy to all people, but particularly the women uh, in our lives. So what is the greater issue uh, going on here? Mary got it, and Jesus eventually got it. Now, Jesus and his family, they, they weren't very wealthy people, so this is probably uh, the wedding of, of folks that could have been peasants. Uh, and my guess is, is nobody else would have cared they ran out of wine. But the wedding would have been ruined. Imagine that. I mean, you go over to the, one of the hotels in town to, uh, to uh, a wedding of, of, of some of your friends, and uh, maybe they serve the bread, and they pass around the water and the coffee. But then somebody stands up and says, there's, we ran out of food. There's, there's no food. It kind of puts a pall on, on the wedding celebration. And, and, and uh, Imagine that happening, and, and, and some, some wonderful woman from some congregation someplace just stands up and says, well, that can't be, and runs out of the kitchen like our mamas and our grandmamas did and just kind of just takes a few little things and puts it all together, and, and everybody eats, rich or poor. It doesn't matter because everyone deserves, everyone deserves to eat. Everyone deserves to have, to have uh, something to, to be joyful about. Mary, Mary got that, and she communicated it very clearly to Jesus, even though Jesus wasn't ready to start doing the miracles. So the first miracle is to say, the party continues, the joy continues, everybody has the, the wine, everybody has all the ham sandwiches they want, everyone can eat all the scalped ham they want, because everyone deserves that. And it's almost like Jesus, the Son of God, looked at his mom and said, boy, I, I, I thought I'd learned it all, but thank you, Mom. So as a pastor, I have learned so much from the mamas of my congregations, the Marys of the congregations I've been honored to serve, because I realize that, that most of the mamas in our midst serve just for serving's sake, serve so that everyone might have what they need. So I walk by and I see people faithfully knitting prayer shawls for the reason that, that no matter who is in the hospital, young or old, they have the opportunity to receive this comfort, comfort scarf that's been, that's been prayed over and, and knitted stitch by stitch, hook by hook um, with, with love. Uh, or I walk through on a Thursday and see um, our quilters quilting for only one reason, so that people might be warm and reminded that they are loved, whether they are refugees waiting in, for, for a country that will take them in thousands of miles from here, or our high school seniors that will go on to college and wrap themselves in those quilts knowing that someone somewhere loves them. I'm reminded once again this year that for, for years the women of this congregation have, have have organized to give gifts to the people at Golden Living. And certainly there are people at Golden Living that will get scores of gifts every Christmas, but there's always one or two that only get one. And it's from the women of Christ the King. Because a couple of courageous women years ago decided that no one should go without a gift at Christmas, and all of you faithfully stepped in to do that. It's the same at funeral serving. You know, it's interesting. You'll find in this congregation, I don't care if you're the richest one in the world or if you don't have a dime, you will be served with the greatest love and joy and abundance as the King of England or the Queen of England because we have people who are committed and have been committed over the years that, 
that everybody gets treated with love and respect and everybody gets plenty to eat. There'll be plenty of brownings and plenty of salad and plenty of sandwiches and our Lutheran equivalent of wine, plenty of coffee. <laughs> or I think of wedding hospitality. Our doors are open. I think of scholarships that we give to those who come forward. We get it. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. You'd think that he just would have known that as the only son of God. But remember, he was, he was son of God and son of man. And he learned much, obviously, from his heavenly father. But let us not forget that Jesus learned so much from his amazing mama. And maybe, maybe exemplified for him the most Im important lesson of the time. Because remember, in that time, not everyone had, had access to the good things in life, not even, even had access to God. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you're going to come to the Father, you've got to come through me. And if you come through me, if you just believe, if you believe, everybody gets in. Rich or poor, young or old, just believe. Just believe. He learned that from his mama. And if we didn't, or if we somehow missed it, we darn well better learn it from Jesus. Because in the party that Jesus is planning, nobody gets left out, ever certainly in eternity, and he's counting on us, not just the mamas, but all of us, to make sure that everyone has what they need here and now.